Oh man, I love charging my local rec center. Good thing they got the free charge point unit. We got our friendly uh, near over here charging as well. Let me just take the handle and, uh, oh. Oh, okay. How's it going? I'm Max without a spec guide, and today I wanna to make a really, really important video. This is one of those ones that I think is super important for you to share with anyone you know who's getting an EV or considering one. So much of the media conversation around EVs, including our channel out of the spec network, is about DC fast charging, super rapid charging for electric cars along highways, corridors for road tripping. This is a super important topic, but we talk about it so much, I don't think we talk enough about the slower charging, what we might call level two charging. And let me just introduce some quick nerdy terminology for you here in case you're unaware. So there's many ways to charge an electric car. I just mentioned DC fast charging that requires specialized hardware and infrastructure. It's very fancy. You have big stalls, big power transformers that are taking energy from the grid and basically pumping it really fast through direct current into a car's battery. This is what makes electric car road trips possible. And in the US, we have mixed networks in terms of reliability for this. And it's an issue, and we're gonna continue covering it. However, I think so many ways to charge an EV are ignored because most people charge at home or they charge in their town with chargers like what's behind me. And that's where level two comes in. So why is it called level two? Well, level one charging is just plugging into a wall outlet. Like you might plug in a toaster and appliance. You actually can plug in an electric car, believe it or not, that way too. Oftentimes they'll come with mobile chargers or you can buy mobile chargers that will basically use the car's onboard AC or alternating current charger um, through either receptacle, level one, which is the wall outlet, or level two. Level two is much more ideal for electric cars with modern larger battery packs because it's double the voltage and in many cases, many more amps. We're talking like 50, 60, depending on the breaker and the installation of the site, up to 80 amps, which means that big electric cars with big batteries can reliably charge overnight. It's a game changer. And I think everyone with an electric car who has the option to install one in their home garage or in their parking lot or in their HOA contract needs to look into it. And I realize some people don't have the living situation to enable that. That's where chargers like this come in because this is a ChargePoint 4000. And companies like ChargePoint have this business model of selling these charging hardware units and uh, software packages, right? It's an all-in-one charger with a screen you activate. They sell it to businesses, or in my case, to cities like Boulder, uh, who install these in their rec centers. So right now I'm at the Scott Carpenter Rec Center in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, but Boulder is just one of many cities that has installed these at rec centers. These provide free charging. That is great. However, this unit's down right now, and I'm not just making this video to complain about that. I made another video not related to charging where I just passively mentioned in the background that at another rec center, there was another broken handle. ChargePoint employee actually got in touch with me and said, where's that? Can you remind me? I'm gonna send someone out there to fix it. That's awesome customer service on their end, but that's not what we can rely on because we've got this one here with one missing handle. And then we've got this one here. And this is great because you know you have two spaces, one handicap space. I'm all in support of that. However, with it being so limited, again, you just need more because the intersection of handicapped drivers and EV drivers, it exists and I'm all in support of it. I think that's great, but it's such a limited resource right now. And this is unacceptable. And this is Boulder where, you know, people drive electric cars. We're gradually adopting them. Imagine if this was California, well, there'd be riots. So I'm just saying we need way more. Hardware will fail, that will happen. We're in Colorado where it's sunny, there's high energy UV light always raining down on these units. I'm not surprised hardware fails from time to time. The issue is that, well, I don't know whose responsibility it is to maintain this because ChargePoint sold it to Boulder. I guess the Boulder city has to maintain it. So I have to call someone, figure that out, but I'm gonna report this because one of these handles is broken and you might be able to see the screen on this charger is really janky. It's been like spray painted or something, or maybe just damaged by ultraviolet light. Not ideal. So this Nero next to me is charging, but I can't get a charge because, uh, well, that handle's down. And the other issue with these chargers is while the ChargePoint 4000 units are great, there's other companies in the space I think providing more charging power for less money. As I understand it, I'm not a business, you know, buying these chargers, but I think ChargePoint charges a pretty penny for these. And if you're a nerd, you can see my boss, Kyle Connor's YouTube channel, where he actually had a really cool inside tour of ChargePoint's headquarters in California, how to develop these units. Nothing but the utmost respect for them. I think overall, these are very reliable units. However, like anything outdoors that's, you know, 
used and abused, things will fail from time to time. So I'm not ragging on this charger for failing. What I'm ragging on is, well, right now I'm in a parking lot with about maybe 100, 120 spaces. I don't know, at least 90. There's a lot here. It's a large rec center and there are two stalls. However, these stalls, like you've seen, right, this one can provide power to two cars because it can split its power. The issue is, even if it was fully working and it split its power, each car is charging at, well, half the rate. It's not ideal. Maybe these should be faster stalls. That's in the charging hardware. The bigger issue is that I just think we won't have to worry about this stress, about one being down or all of this. It wouldn't be as much of a crisis if there were more of these. It wouldn't be a big deal at all. And by more, I don't just mean like, oh, instead of two or three, have five. I mean like 20, 30. And this might sound crazy, pardon, there's an emergency vehicle a few blocks away, you might hear it. Um, I think it's important because this hardware is not actually that expensive to install. So while these units are expensive, the wiring is actually very doable for most facilities, for most businesses. These hookups are not nearly as complicated as what's required for DC direct current fast charging, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, what we see along highway corridors. There is no excuse. If you're a property manager, a developer now, someone with a small business, I think you really have to consider not just one, but like two, three, four, five, six, like as many as you can basically afford and provide infrastructure for, you need a lot of these stalls because it's gonna bring EV customers to you. And guess what? Everyone is adopting EVs. Of course, we're not, you know, it's not overnight, but I will tell you being in states like California, we see lines at DC fast chargers. I mean, there's not enough parking spaces at many places with these stalls. And we need these stalls because these stalls turn electric vehicles, in my opinion, from an inconvenience into actually a net benefit. Because right now the mindset everyone has is, oh, I have to navigate to a charger. I have to go to a charger. And if you're not fortunate enough to have home charging, that's part of your weekly routine. And that frankly just, that sucks. I'm gonna be honest. So having these is a game changer because let's say you do have charging at home or you don't. You could have charging with these at your office. You could have it like me at your rec center or your gym that you go to, your pool. While you spend a few hours, you're getting appreciable charge from one of these units. And it's great to see Again, cities like Boulder take baby steps towards deploying two of these, but they need to deploy more. And if that means letting people with gas cars in the moment park at them, fine. But I just want way more of these. I want like, instead of two, again, 10, 20, 30. We need way more. And it doesn't even necessarily need to be free energy. Right now, these are subsidized basically by taxpayers. It's super awesome. Free energy, I can charge my car for free when the charger is working. I love that, but I don't even expect it or need it. Because I think, you know, a lot of EV drivers will pay for the convenience of being able to fill up uh, on battery juice when, or electrons when they're just going about doing other things. The more of these chargers we can put ambiently in the world and just deploy everywhere, the less everyone day to day in urban environments and towns and cities has to think about charging. So I hope this video underscores the importance of that and instills in you, the viewer, this knowledge. Preach it to others, share this video with other people. If you are a business owner, consider installing these. If you are a property developer, you need to consider a lot of 240 volt, NEMA 1450 hardwired, I don't know what, but basically hookups and infrastructure for deploying many, many more of these. ChargePoint specifically has an exciting upcoming 6,000 unit. It's gonna replace this 4,000 hardware. So those are exciting. Those are gonna provide more power. They seem to be more kind of next generation compliant for the bigger battery electric vehicles. So. Hopefully we see more of those. Hopefully we see just more level two chargers overall. I want more, more, more. That's the summary of this video. And um, I do think you can, anyone can write to their mayor, their city council, their county, that chargers need to be everywhere. For employees, for citizens, anyone. Anywhere I go, DMV, post office, pool, gym, office, Best Buy, I don't know where, I don't care where, I want chargers. So they don't have to be the DC fast charging kind. These are great, they're slow, they can trickle charge your car, but much faster than a wall outlet can while you're going about doing other things. Maybe I'm repeating myself, but I cannot underscore the importance of this message enough. As an EV owner now, I realize why these are so important. And when they go down, well, it's a bummer because right now there's so few of them. We need more, more, more. That's the summary of this video. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next Out of Spec Guide video.